Welcome to Land of House, I'm Seth. Today I'm taking a look at the Hookie Neo Mo X. This is a robotic mower that has the 3D LiDAR system and the vision navigation. It has the ability to mow up to 1.5 acres, has different zones you can set up, and all kinds of cool stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at this mower. First thing to note, this mower was packaged well and had no issues during transit. There is some kind of white powder on this, but I think it's just for manufacturing. So what all comes with this mower? First of all, you've got the charging base, which can be found right here. We'll take a look at that. It's got the mower itself. There is an accessory box, the power cable, which comes in this box, and the largest quick start guide I have ever seen. It is uh, bigger than I am. Let's take a look at each of these components, starting with the mower itself. Here on the top, there is a rain sensor. These two little dots will determine if it's raining or not and send the mower back home if it's too wet. The 3D LiDAR system is this glass bulb here on top. It's got the different buttons here, power, home, okay, and grass over here. And then a big emergency stop button right over here. So if this mower is doing something that it shouldn't, just pop this button and it will stop immediately. This is actually the drive wheel. It's a big rubber studded wheel and the mower goes mostly in that direction. This is a bumper and it will activate if pressed in. So if the mower runs into something, that will bump and then uh, the mower will know at that point. Here's the Hookie logo right here. Might be a little hard to see, but right under here is the camera for the vision navigation as well. Turning to the back of the mower, you can see where it will dock and charge with these two contact points right down here. Here on the underside of the mower, first of all, you can see the back wheels spin freely and that will allow this to a turn and move as it needs to. In the middle is the cutting disc. There is a flywheel here on the front, but also four razor blades that will be able to spin freely as this turns. Let's move on to the charging base. This simply has a tread on it that allows the mower to pull up in here and begin charging. These contacts here retract a little bit so that it won't damage whenever it slams up in here. This reflector also tells the robot where it is and how to find the home position. Now on here, there is simply a single power cord which we will plug up here in just a moment. So, speaking of the power cord, it's found in this box right here, and it is plenty long enough to reach to the charging base. It's just a simple AC to DC converter. A small accessory box is included. There are some pads, some cleaning brushes in case the mower were to get clogged, and then some spikes so that you can put this uh, charging base in the ground. Luckily, this mower does also include, looks like two sets of replacement blades, which is very nice. To begin the setup process, I have found a flat area that doesn't have obstacles around, and I've placed the charging base here. Now, this kit does come with these plastic anchors. I'm gonna see if I can get this to go into my hard ground here. Once the base is anchored down, use the power cord to connect this to grid power. I'm going to tuck this up out of the way so the mower doesn't hit it. Also, because the mower utilizes the LiDAR system, it's able to be charged indoors if you want to protect this mower from the weather. So you can set the charging base in your garage where you have a power supply and just use that to charge your mower. Once the base is installed with the power connected, I'm going to back the mower up into the charging station. A green light comes on right here to indicate that charging is happening. Now that I have the mower connected to the charging base, let's go ahead and get the app installed so we can start using the mower. The first thing you're gonna to want to do is download the NeoMo app. You can find that in your app's download store. Now that I have the app installed, I'm going to turn on the Bluetooth. I'm also gonna go in here and turn on my location. So you've gotta have both of those on in order to get this up and running. Now that I have those, I'm going to press the NeoMo app here and go ahead and set up an account. Now that I have the mower connected to the app, it's time to start mapping out the area that I want the mower to cut. 
So I'm here in the map data. I'm going to press the add button and go into map management. The mower is now moving out of the charging base in preparation for starting the map. I'm now going to use the controls here on my phone to move the mower around and map out the location that I want to be mowed by this robotic mower. I'm going to follow behind and map. Okay, I've walked out my mowing area twice now, and as soon as I get back to the starting position, it says undo map. So, uh, very frustrating right now. And I can also tell that this mower is not good on hills. It is struggling real hard to climb my hill. So, keep that in mind. It's gonna do better on flat ground. So, all right, let me try this again and see if I can get this thing mapped out. All right, third time did it. I went down the hill and back up. Didn't do, but just uh, a little bit of an area. So, I also had to set a recharge path to get back up to the charging station. I'm going to go ahead and press the play button and let's see how well this is going to mow this little strip. I kind of anticipate it's going to struggle pretty hard on this hill. This little section right here was the recharge path. Let's test out the avoidance system. Very good. It went right around me and found the path that it had just cut. We're getting some spin on those front tires. It's trying. Yeah, if it can't tackle right here, it's going to really struggle up this hill. When it comes to the flat ground, this mower is doing a fantastic job at cutting the grass. It's making it up at the hill about halfway and then starts spinning out and it turns back around. So it won't be able to make it on this hill, I'm afraid. So it gets about right here and really struggles to get any higher than that. Let's see what happens whenever it finds an obstacle while on the hill. Doesn't seem to care. It is quite handy how the app shows the progress of the mowing so far. It's got the working time, it's taken 12 minutes, 22% done currently, and 30.3 square meters have currently been mowed. You can move around on the map and even zoom in to see what has been mowed so far. Let's see if it's able to tackle any more of this hill. So far it's just spinning a lot. The mower has actually been doing okay on this hill. Sadly, it's gotten to this point up here and it's been stuck for about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and doesn't seem to be able to find its way out yet. Let's see what it does here. So yeah, I'm guessing that this portion of the hill is just too much for it. Imagine if it were wet over here. It definitely would never make it. It doesn't need much help, but sadly, it's just not quite enough to get up there.
Now that we know the mower does not like my hill, I've moved the charging base to a much more flat area. I'm gonna go ahead and map out two zones down here so we can see how the mower operates between those two. It'll also give us a chance to see how the charging path brings the mower back to the station from the further zone. So I'm gonna use the app to mark out these two places down here. So this is very important. If you look on the map in a very light orange color, it says that you've now gotten nearby the starting point. If you go too far, it'll say there's overlap and you have to redo the whole thing. So keep an eye on that and make sure you push your blue checkbox whenever it's time. All right, let's go ahead and create a charge path by going over here to the other end and create the charge path. And I simply want to Take the mower from its current position, turn it, all right, let's start mapping, and just simply go over here to the charging port. I think we go ahead and turn it around so it knows where it's going. Do a check and complete. Let's just call this recharge. I now have the first zone. I'm gonna map out a second zone real quick on the other side and we will then mow those two zones and see what happens. I set up two zones. The first one right here is just a flat basic yard. Although I did put the obstacle back in the way. The second zone has the playhouse, the swing set, and some holes in the ground. I wanna see how well the mower tackles that. I have just sent it out to do both zones, and I've also noticed we're about to get a rainstorm, so we will see if those sensors on top of the mower send it back to the charging base if it does begin to rain. So let's see how well this does. Zone number one is just this lower section right here, plus this one obstacle, and zone number two has the hose reel, this pipe, the playhouse, and some of the swing set in the way as well. As it turns out, by default, the obstacle avoidance system is not turned on, which is a bit strange. So on the app, click the dots up in the upper right corner, go to device settings, and you can find down here the visual obstacle avoidance option. Go ahead and turn that on. Now the mower should go around obstacles and not knock them over or play soccer like it's been doing. So let's go ahead and start the mowing. Let's see what happens now with the obstacle avoidance system turned on. I've got this PVC pipe here in its way. Okay, it has recognized it and it is correcting to go around. That's much better. I wonder why that wasn't turned on by default. Seems like it would have been a safety feature that you would have had. There's another feature that's turned off by default in the app. So if you zoom into the map, you'll notice that it has missed a spot where I had that obstacle. I can go into the settings once again and go to the device settings and turn on patch mowing. This will essentially allow the mower to look for places that haven't been cut in the zone and then it will tackle those places and cut them down. So that is important to have. So hopefully here at the end of this little section, it will come back and it will mow that patch of grass right here in the middle that was missed. It'll also look around for other tall grass and cut that down as well. For patch mowing, what I'm looking for is for it to cut this little strip right here. Maybe hard to show on camera, but it's missed some grass there on this little line right here. And so we want it to cut that. And then of course, right over here where that obstacle was in place, we want it to cover that again as well. 
So let's see how it does here whenever it finishes this last little strip. The mower finished its zone and now it's going back to hit those high spots that I was hoping it would hit. As you can see, it's traveling down that line and getting those missed clipping pieces right there. Excellent, it's good news. When patch mowing is occurring, you can look into your app and see where it has found those places and it is mowing that with a yellow or orange color to indicate that it has found small strips of grass that are uh, taller and it's having to go back and find those. So it's very cool. This app is very nice. I like it a lot. And yes, the mower is going back over where it missed earlier for the obstacle that it found. I just noticed that the mower is returning to the charging station. Let me bring up the app here and see what's going on. Looks like we've got 18% uh, left here on the app. So that's why it's coming back. It needs to charge. Now it has managed to get almost everything completed. So the lower portion of the yard here, zone one, is done. Um, we should go over and check out what's happening there in zone two. Uh, it actually went around the playhouse for probably 15 or 20 minutes trying to get that area and then finally gave up and mowed everything else. So it would be important to highlight in the app that that is a no cut zone underneath the playhouse, which makes sense. All right, we are charging. It got around the playhouse all over there, and this was all on about 50% battery down to 18. So I would say, yes, it did a good job. It was able to avoid some of the holes that are over here, and it, uh, did a good job on flat land. It did rain for about five minutes, but the mower did not detect that it had to stop. So that must not have been enough rain on here to send it back to the home base. So my thoughts on the Hooky Neomo X. First of all, I tried to use this mower on a very steep hill and it did not like that. So keep in mind, this mower is designed for flatter terrain, like what I have down here on this lower section. You have to go into the app to turn on the obstacle avoidance system and also it's worth turning on the patch mowing as well. So with those two turned on, this mower has performed quite well here on my lower section of yard. So it seems to have enough battery power or battery life to cover quite a large surface and so hmm, that was fun. <laughs> my thoughts on the Hooky Neomo X. First of all, I tried it on my rather steep hill and it did not like that. But as soon as I moved down here to this flatter area, had no problems whatsoever. Now the two features that I would turn on immediately in the app is the obstacle avoidance system and also the patch mowing. With those two turned on, it seems to take care of my uh, yard down here quite well. So yeah, stay away from super steep hills, turn on the obstacle avoidance and you should be good to go for one to one and a half acres on uh, a single charge with this mower. I just mowed zone one down here and it used uh, less than 10% of the battery. So I'm impressed with it. As long as you keep it within uh, a nice flat yard, you should be good to go. If you wanna check out more information on this mower, I'll have a link in the description down below. Thanks for watching. I'm Seth with Land of House and I will see you in the next video.